Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, 534 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. March corn futures up a half cent at 685 and a half. March soybeans down five and a quarter at 1537 and a half. March Chicago wheat down one and a quarter at 790 and three quarters. March Kansas City wheat up a quarter cent at 912 and a half. March spring wheat up a half at 931 and a quarter. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're getting pretty close to 8,000 subscribers. I think we can probably do it this month. Appreciate it as always. Uh, what is the biggest problem that a lot of farmers face when it comes to grain marketing? It's the fear of missing out. Corn goes to six, you're afraid to sell it because it might go to seven. Corn goes to seven, you're afraid to sell it because it might go to eight. Uh, yesterday in my premium video, I discussed uh, this issue and I talked about the courage call strategy, which is an option strategy that a lot of you guys are probably familiar with. I laid out the pros and cons and a couple of examples. This is not something that I advocate necessarily, but I've had a lot of questions about it. I wanted to explain it. Uh, what I've been told, uh, what my subscribers have told me, is that the best part of these videos is that I don't really push anything. This is all educational, um, um, explanatory type stuff. There's no trade recommendations in any of this. It's just kind of me giving you both sides of the equation here when it comes to strategies like this. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, sign up today. I'll send you that video over uh, 50 bucks a month. Cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. Just go to standardgrain.com this morning. You can actually sign up on your phone. It takes about uh, a minute if you have a credit card with you. Mexico has scrapped its planned ban on uh, GMO corn imports for animal feed and industrial use. So this move was approved in a government decree yesterday afternoon. The decree eliminates January 2024 as the date at which GMOs would be banned and drops any future dates. The move, of course, comes amid pressure from U.S. officials. Under the decree, the new measures affect today. So they take effect today. So when it comes to GMO corn, Mexico will continue to allow permanently, it sounds, um, the import of GMO corn for animal feed and industrial use. Now, they're still planning on banning or prohibiting the use of GMO corn for human consumption as well as glyphosate. Mexican officials were unclear uh, when such a ban or restriction would take place. Now, Reuters estimates in, in the piece that they had here that white corn accounts for 18 to 20 percent of U.S. corn exports to Mexico. That number sounds high to me. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe that most of the white corn grown in the U.S. is some sort of GMO variety. So if you're a white corn grower, maybe this could be an issue for you. I'm not too sure. If you guys have any insight on that situation, drop it in the comments here. I think white corn production is only like one or two percent of total U.S. corn output. But generally speaking, this should be seen as I won't say a positive for the corn market, but I'm going to say it takes uh, one risk off the table here, certainly. Russia may not extend the Black Sea grain deal. Russia's deputy foreign minister said this yesterday. Our position on the issue of a further continuation of the Black Sea initiative remains the same. Without tangible results on the implementation of the Russia-UN memorandum, above all on the real removal of sanctions or restrictions on Russian agricultural exports, the extension of the Ukrainian document is inappropriate. Chatter from Russia regarding the grain deal these last uh, four or five trading days probably has something to do with the recent strength in the wheat market. However, you got to remember, Ukraine's already shipping drastically reduced amounts of grain versus pre-war levels. I think exports of corn and wheat combined, they're going to be down 40% this year or something like that. But there's still risk on the table here, and uh, I think this has helped to support the wheat market or maybe has resulted in some short covering at least. Top diplomats from the U.S. and China are considering a meeting. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is reportedly considering a meeting with China's top diplomat at a security conference later this week. There has been uh, very, very little U.S.-China communication uh, this month uh, due to the spy balloon incident. Blinken called off a meeting to Beijing that was set for last week because of the spy balloon incident. Uh, China has been very critical of the response to all of that, so perhaps a meeting this week. Could help to ease tensions just a little bit. You got some rains moving across the uh, U.S. Southern Plains this morning. Uh, parts of Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, parts of Texas. Now, I think where they really need the rain is like the western part of Kansas 
eastern Colorado, um, western Oklahoma, and I'm not sure if they caught any rain or not overnight. If you guys are in any of those areas, the western parts of those states, uh, let me know if you caught any rain overnight. It didn't look to me like they did, but um, uh, finding observed rainfall totals uh, just, you know, for, for the period like hours ago, it's, it's tough to do. So I don't know if there were rains there or not. When you look at the next seven days, really not a ton in the forecast for those drought stricken areas. It's more like the kind of central part of the country that's going to see the rain. And even those areas aren't going to see a ton. U.S. corn inspections were soft last week. Same story, different week, I guess. Uh, USDA reported that only 512,000 metric tons of corn were inspected for export in the week ending February 9th. That print was up 3.5% on the week, but down 65% versus the same week last year. So we've still got a corn export problem here. Accumulated corn shipments for the current marketing year are down 35% versus the same period last year. Sales are down 41% versus the same period last year. USDA projects that corn exports will decline by only 22%. So there is a strong argument here for more downward revenue visions to the corn export projection on the uh, current marketing year balance sheet uh, for the United States. Now, soybean shipments were strong. Uh, 1.56 million metric tons of soybeans inspected for export during the week ending February 6th. That was down 19% on the week, but up 26% versus the same period last year. So soybean shipments have been good. Uh, accumulated soybean shipments for the current marketing year are up one or two percent versus the same period last year sales are up two percent versus the same period last year usda projects that soybean exports will decline by eight percent this year now, some people might argue that usda is understating exports because of what i just told you but at the same time others might argue that late season soybean shipments will be greatly reduced because of this monster brazilian crop so soybean sales and shipments are okay for now but um, once this brazilian crop is online online and they're shipping beans uh, our program is is, is going to be hurt i think the government will release uh, cpi data consumer inflation data this morning at 7 30 a.m central time traders estimate that cpi rose at an annualized rate of 6.2 percent in january that's your pre-report estimate which would be down from six and a half in December. This would be the lowest annualized monthly print uh, since October of 2021 if confirmed, if that 6.2 is confirmed. Uh, this will affect in all likelihood equity markets, currencies, treasuries, other outside markets. I feel like the grains probably um, uh, should not be impacted by this a whole lot. Cattle market was higher yesterday, feeders higher yesterday, not much cash trade to speak of yet this week. In the outside markets, the U.S. dollar's lower, stock market's up a little bit, the S&P's up 10, uh, the Dow Jones up 40. Uh, gold market's up seven bucks, crude oil can't hold a rally, down $1.30 at 78.83 in the March WTI. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you Wednesday.